This program is made possible in part by funding from Associated Bank with 17 locations in the Twin Cities area. Raymond Auto Body, providing collision repair services to the Twin Cities for four generations. The Bob Peterson Agency of Country Financial in Shoreview, Minnesota. Norm's Tire Sales of Little Canada, family owned and operated for three generations. Karen's Monogramming and Sportswear, providing sports embroidery to Oakdale for over 10 years. Maplewood Dental Lab, providing dental services to the East Metro for over 25 years. Mancini's Char House and Lounge, a 50 year growing tradition in St. Paul. Raring Auto Body, now using environmentally friendly waterborne paint. RDA Collectibles in Oakdale, specializing in coin collectibles and sports memorabilia. Motorworks BMW and Mini in Bloomington, using recycled oil to heat our showroom floors. And by continuing contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to High School Girls Basketball being presented by Thai Video Productions. Today is the first of two games here at the Breakdown Tip-Off Classic at the Hopkins Lindbergh Center. Today's matchup will feature the De La Salle Islanders of the Tri-Metro Conference and the St. Paul Central Minutemen of the St. Paul City Conference. All the action is coming up shortly. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Peden. Glad you could be with us again as we debut our fourth season at Thai Video Productions. Today it will be an interesting matchup of sorts. Central is on their second straight back-to-back -back series. They played last weekend at the Thanksgiving tournament at Hamlin splitting those games, losing to Rosemount and beating Highland Park. Central coming off another back-to-back -to -back to this weekend, losing to Orono by seven last night, and now they face De La Salle. De La Salle going through several changes this season. Former head coach Brian Fry left, and in his place is Faith Johnson-Patterson. If you don't know who she is, Faith Johnson-Patterson led Minneapolis North to five state tournament titles in Class 3A. She brought her whole coaching staff with her. I talked to her last night, and she said... To make a long story short, she's looking for something different, and she'll definitely get that with the Tri-Metro Conference and the huge depth of talent in that field. Now we'll go to the keys of the game. We'll start with the De La Salle Islanders. First, they're going to need to take care of the basketball. That's key for every team. But for De La Salle, this is their first game. They haven't had a chance to work in game situations, so that will be key. Second, they'll want to contain Genvante Hill. Genvante doing very well in her first three games of the season, scoring about 20 points in her last two. And finally, they just want to play hard. Faith Johnson-Patterson bringing her style of play. I talked to the assistant coach, John Patterson, and he said it's a style that not every Roth member of the De La Salle roster is used to. Keys to the game for St. Paul Central. It's pretty simple for them. They want to keep the game close. I talked to Willie Taylor last night. He's concerned about stamina, so if he, the longer he keeps the game close, the more likely uh, victory will go in his favor. And then Hill's stamina will be a huge factor. Genvante Hill's a sophomore. St. Paul Central has a very young team this year, so energy will be a key factor. Tip-off is coming up shortly, but first we have some interviews that we'll take. So what we'll bring to you before the game starts. This program is made possible in part by funding from Associated Bank with 17 locations in the Twin Cities area. Raymond Auto Body, providing collision repair services to the Twin Cities for four generations. The Bob Peterson Agency of Country Financial in Shoreview, Minnesota. Warm's Tire Sales of Little Canada, family owned and operated for three generations. Karen's Monogramming and Sportswear, providing sports embroidery to Oakdale for over 10 years. Maplewood Dental Lab, providing dental services to the East Metro for over 25 years. Mancini's Char House and Lounge, a 50 year growing tradition in St. Paul. Raring Auto Body, now using environmentally friendly waterborne paint. RDA Collectibles in Oakdale, specializing in coin collectibles and sports memorabilia. Motorworks BMW and Mini in Bloomington, using recycled oil to heat our showroom floors. And by continuing contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Peden here with the assistant head coach for De La Salle, a rather new assistant coach for De La Salle, uh, John Patterson, the husband of Faith Johnson Patterson. John, this is your first game today, so what are you looking for with the Islanders with this new team? Well, uh, we've just come out of a few weeks of practice. This is our first game with a new group of kids, and uh, we're looking to see um, some of the things they've had picked up in practice and, and, and some of the continuity from player to player right now. And conditioning is our, is our big thing right now. Tell me, what is the biggest difference between working at North for over the last decade and now working at De La Salle? 
Well, um, I guess one of the biggest differences that uh, I've seen is, is just the, the, the kids are generally the same. However, um, us getting used to starting all over again. Uh, the players themselves are, are, are a little bit hungry. They have a lot to learn. Uh, our style of basketball is, is, is a little bit more upgrade than they've been familiar with in the past. So there's a lot of work to be done. Three of your players came from Minneapolis North over to De La Salle, and how has that to help the adjustment process for you? Well, uh, for us, it's, it, it helps the other kids out with familiarity with some of the things that we have done as far as drills. Uh, other than that, uh, a lot of the kids know each other, so they work together well. It's not too much of a, a, a period in which they have to adjust. And for today, what are you looking to do against St. Paul Central, who's had three games under their belt, uh, where you're just starting out today? Well, again, we're just looking to see uh, if the kids have picked up uh, some of the things that we've learned in practice and transferring them to actually a real game. We've had no scrimmages, and we've basically been out there beating each other up. So we're, 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 we're very interested as coaches to see some of the things that they've learned and how that's going to carry over into a real game atmosphere. Well, I talked to your wife last night. She said she was looking for something different, and by golly, you're going to get it this season. <laughs> so good luck today. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us, and yes. uh, have fun out there. Thank you very much, Mike. That's John Patterson. We will be right back with the head coach of St. Paul Central. Hello, everyone. Mike Peden here, and I'm here with the St. Paul Central assistant coach, Christine Switzenberg. Now, Christine, as we mentioned, St. Paul Central playing their second back-to-back -back series th this weekend. So how do you keep that stamina up, especially since you've got a less than a 24-hour turnaround this time around? Yeah, it's definitely something we need to think about. Um, after the game yesterday, Coach Taylor told the girls, get some rest, get ready to go. We have to do this again tomorrow. Um, so it's definitely something we're thinking about and have to play with. What are some positives that you've seen with this team so far? It's a very young team and not necessarily as strong of a team as Willie Taylor has fielded in the past. Yes, it's definitely a young team, but most of the girls are um, very driven, hard workers, play with intensity. So we use some of those things to try to offset how young quite a few of them are. As we mentioned, you split the Hamlin tournament last weekend, beating St. Paul Highland Park. Does that give you any sort of indication of how the St. Paul City Conference might play out? Um, you know, I don't know that we're ready to make any leaps about how we'll be in the conference, but um, we definitely have some competitors that we'll have to think about with the St. Paul City Conference. And what are you looking for today as you take on De La Salle, who is playing their first game of the season today with their new coach, Faith Johnson-Patterson? Um, we're looking for uh, the girls running their plays, playing disciplined basketball, taking care of the ball, keeping those turnovers down, playing good defense. All right, well, good luck today, and thank you for taking the time to speak thank with you. us. Uh, thank you. Assistant Coach Christine Switzenberg. This portion of today's broadcast is paid for in part by MotorWorks, BMW, and Mini in Bloomington. Serving the Twin Cities since 1989 and using recycled oil to heat our showroom floors. Welcome back. They are presenting the starting lineups as we come to you from the Lindbergh Center. This is our first time coming out here, and it's a very nice facility. I've got five courts, three hardwood, two vinyl. A lot of basketball action can take place here. But let's not worry about the hard courts. Let's worry about the starting lineups. We'll begin with the De La Salle Islanders in numerical order. The starting five will be Alina Starr at forward, Serena Baker at forward, Diamond Lane at guard, Carissa Wolinick at guard, and Tyshana Johnson at center. Serena Baker and Carissa Wolinick are the team's leading scorers returning from last year's De La Salle roster under head coach, former head coach Brian Fry. And as we mentioned earlier, three of Minneapolis North players joined the De La Salle roster this year. Wolinick averaged 12.2 points per game, playing 28 games. Starting lineup for St. Paul Central will be Betsy McDonald at guard, Destiny Roberts at forward, Brianna Reeves at forward, Maya Wahlberg at guard, and Abby Barner at center. A little different than what you will see at St. Paul Central games. A couple players showed up late. Genvante Hill, though, is the player to watch, even though she's not in the starting five today for St. Paul Central. She's had some big games early on, but again, her stamina will be a key in this game. Well, that takes care of the starting lineups. 
And uh, while we're at that, we'd like to remind you that this program is being brought to you in part by Valley West Do It Best Hardware, located at the Valley West Shopping Center in Bloomington. H&H Products, located at Lindale Avenue South in Bloomington. Freeway Ford, located at Lindale Avenue South in Bloomington. Quail Ridge Trading, located at France Avenue South in Bloomington. A1 Lock Service, provided by Kiwi, located at Snelling Avenue North in St. Paul. Glasgow Automotive Service, located at University Avenue in St. Paul. West Bloomington Dairy Queen, located at Old Shakopee Road in Bloomington. And St. Paul Customs, located at Snelling Avenue North in St. Paul. Faith Johnson-Patterson bringing her experience from Minneapolis North into this game. They were looking for something different, and they're getting one. As uh, for them, it's almost like starting from scratch, as they pointed out to me. Of course, Willie Taylor, the legendary head coach at St. Paul Central, the winning, winningest coach in the St. Paul City Conference and in Central history. And he, of course, has two state titles in Class 4A. St. Paul Central wearing red. De La Salle wearing white. First of two games we will bring to you today from the tip-off classic. And here's the tip-off. We are underway, and the first possession goes to De La Salle. That is Diamond Lane with the ball. Fast break, yes! De La Salle scores quickly. Here comes Brianna Reeves as she hands it off to Maya Wahlberg. Reeves. Long two, no good. Rebound Lane. Out to Wolinick. Wolinick kicks out to Lane for three. Too strong. And the rebound's picked up by Alina Starr. Starr, one of the transfers from Minneapolis North. Starr was an eighth grader. And under the transfer rules, hang on, we've got a three-pointer. Holy cow, I thought that was going out, but Serena Baker makes it fall. So it's 5-0 De La Salle, as I mentioned. If you're playing eighth grade, we've got a blocking call on Wolinick. And she's not happy about that. If you, you can play in high, varsity high school in eighth grade and then go to another school in ninth grade without losing a year of eligibility. Of course, the state high school league enacted the transfer rule similar to the NCAA's it's NCAA transfer rule a couple years ago. But if you move or enroll at a different school in ninth grade than you, what you played in eighth grade, you can still play and not use up a year of eligibility. And that's why you three players able to transfer. Destiny Roberts with the ball as she hands it off to Reeves. Traveling violation on Reeves. St. Paul Central starting sluggish in the opening minutes. Diamond Lane last year averaged 5.4 points per game in 19 games for the Islanders. Long two, short from Star. Fight for the rebound. Star picks it up. Nearly loses the ball to Reeves, but it goes out of bounds. You see that blue curtain there. That's to separate the courts. There are three hardwood courts, as I mentioned earlier. And there's some action. Wolinick from the corner. Too strong. There's action going on at the main court. And so they're using the second court as space so that uh, Aaron Balls don't go flying into other courts out here. Wolinick again. Way off the mark. And Baker saves it, and she does. Starr picks it up. Going back to Baker inside, and she'll draw the foul. Baker, as we mentioned in the starting lineups, averaged 12.2 points per game last season, 330 on the season in 27 games. And now she will head to the line to shoot two. De La Salle already up by five. But the first one is wide right. Baker, a 5'7 junior. Sinks the back end, so De La Salle takes a 6-0 lead with 16.23 to go in the first half. If you're new to high school basketball, we play 18-minute halves versus the quarters, and Diamond Lane gets the steal. She finds an open, Wolinick, but she's short, and it's picked up by Reeves, and we've got a foul. I believe it. It's gonna go against De La Salle. Let's see who is it's on. It's against Wolinick. That's her second personal foul. She's gotta be careful. And we have a timeout taken by De La Salle. 
6 0 with 16 14 to go in the first half. This program is made possible in part by funding from Associated Bank with 17 locations in the Twin Cities area. Raymond Auto Body, providing collision repair services to the Twin Cities for four generations. The Bob Peterson Agency of Country Financial in Shoreview, Minnesota. Norm's Tire Sales of Little Canada, family owned and operated for three generations. Karen's Monogramming and Sportswear, providing sports embroidery to Oakdale for over 10 years. Maplewood Dental Lab, providing dental services to the East Metro for over 25 years. Mancini's Char House and Lounge, a 50 year growing tradition in St. Paul. Raring Auto Body, now using environmentally friendly waterborne paint. RDA Collectibles in Oakdale, specializing in coin collectibles and sports memorabilia. Motorworks BMW and Mini in Bloomington, using recycled oil to heat our showroom floors. And by continuing contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. And we rejoin you at the Lindbergh Center at Hopkins High School. If you just joined us, De La Salle leads 6-0 over St. Paul Central. This is De La Salle's first game of the season as Genvante Hill now enters the game. She had quite a season last year with St. Paul Central. Has done some big things this year. Some new players coming in for Central. Claire Thomas is also in the game. Genvante Hill contested short. Rebound. Tyshana Johnson, but she loses the ball, and it's picked up by Thomas. And we have a backcourt violation on Central, so De La Salle will pick up the ball. This is Tyshana Johnson. Johnson averaged 6.3 points per game last season for Minneapolis North. And she hands it off to Lane. Lane losing the fight for the ball, and it's lost to Alexis Boyd. So De La Salle a little sluggish in their first game of the season. Three-pointer, short, rebound, and no putback. That was Shade Chapman with the board. But look at this. We've got Alina Starr, count it. Alina Starr was open on the other end, and she will have a three-point play opportunity when she takes the free throw, Starr averaged 8.7 points per game last season for Minneapolis North, as we mentioned. North finishing second in the Class 3A state tournament, losing to St. Michael Alberville. North was up for most of that game. Starr cannot complete the three-point play. Islanders one of three from the free throw line, and we have a blocking foul. It will go against Johnson. So De La Salle picking up fouls early. It's o we're only three minutes, not even three minutes into the first half. They have to be careful. Genvante Hills pass is intercepted by Wollenick. Wollenick out to Johnson. And Central breaks up the play. Well, good job for the Minutemen stopping the fast break. Wollenick to inbound the ball. Hands it off to Johnson for three. Too strong. Rebound Hill. Genvante Hill, the cousin of Ohio State player Taylor Hill. She finds an open. Betsy McDonald, but McDonald can't get it to fall. And McDonald will get called for the foul. Central had that problem last season. More so with second chances than they did with open looks. But we mentioned in the open, Willie Taylor is concerned about his team's stamina. And speaking of stamina, we would like to thank Holiday Station Stores at Hopkins Crossroads in Minnetonka for providing coffee this morning to our crew to keep their stamina going. I don't drink coffee, but uh, I don't need it. I don't think Diamond Lane needs it either as he brings the ball up the court. Hands it off to an open Johnson, and Johnson gets the left-handed layup. De La Salle with a 10-0 run to start this game, and here comes the full-court press. And Genvante Hill throws it away. Alexis Boyd, the intended target. That full court press is working to perfection for St. Paul Central. And we have a substitution coming in for St. Paul Central. Betsy McDonald is replacing Destiny Roberts. Lane loses the ball to Boyd. Boyd, one on one, was looking for Chapman. And the ball goes out of bounds. It will stay with the Minutemen. Wow. 
Hale to inbound it. Goes to Boyd. To Maya Cyrus. Hill thought about a three. Goes for it. No. Rebound Baker. Baker out to Lane. Long three. Bull die. And St. Paul Central will call timeout. De La Salle opening the game with a 13-0 run as they lead by that score. And so. And De La Salle starting hot to open this game. That was Walt Dome providing some great camera work, getting some De La Salle audio. We'd like to remind you that this broadcast is being brought to you in part by Quail Ridge Trading, located at France Avenue South in Bloomington, and St. Paul Customs, located at Snelling Avenue North in St. Paul. Hill will unbound the ball. St. Paul Central looking to get on the board. De La Salle starting this game on a 13-0 run, and that could go, no, it won't go higher. Almost intercepted, and here comes Hill. She's moving quickly, finds Boyd. Boyd in trouble, and the shot is blocked. We give credit to Derek and Griffiths, the other Minneapolis North transfer. Lane, long three again, not this time. Rebound Star, loses it to Boyd. St. Paul Central getting some open looks early, just can't revert. Here comes Chapman, and the Miniman finally get on the board. is Baker. Hill trying to break up the pass. It will stay with De La Salle. Talked to Willie Taylor in the open last night. He said that St. Paul Central's a pretty young team this year. They might have a down year in terms of uh, his standards and standards that fans might have set given Central's history in the last few years. But they have a great feeder system over with the Martin Luther King uh, middle school program. That is Star. Star gets the fadeaway jumper or the right-handed long hook. And the Islanders lead 15 to 2. Cyrus for three. No. Picked up by Griffiths. And here comes Baker. Baker will take it herself. And the play is broken up. But Lane is there. Hands it back to Baker. Baker makes it work from the left side. De La Salle, 17. St. Paul Central, 2. Hill for three, no. And Diamond Lane will get called for the traveling violation. She's not happy about that. That will put the ball back in Central's hands, but Central not getting much in early. I talked to Willie Taylor with these back-to-back -back games and I asked him who the heck scheduled them and uh, he said it was the athletic director. Boy for three, too strong, who uh, helped in the scheduling and so he, uh, he said he might have a word with him next season about scheduling so many back-to-backs to start the year but he said his team should get stronger when the conference portion of the season starts and right now St. Paul Central would be a clear favorite St. Paul Johnson and Como Park lost to Minneapolis Southwest in non-conference action earlier so we have Griffiths mid-range no good rebound Hill Hill finds Chapman again, but she can't get those passes to fall, and it will go out of bounds. Possession will go to the Islanders. Genvante Hill might need to watch a little more Brett Favre tape.
This is Starr. Starr loses the ball to Hill. St. Paul Central getting steals on defense. They're just not converting them to points. And they do there. Hill with the assist. McDonald with the basket. But St. Paul Central has a 13-point deficit to overcome. Star to an open Griffiths. Griffiths open on the back door. St. Paul Central can't trade baskets if they want to come back. And another reach and foul on De La Salle. It's against Serena Baker. Well, Baker will sit out. In her place is Wolinick and Jamila Toussaint. But De La Salle gets the steal. That was Star with the steal. Strip. And now we've got a foul. It will go against Boyd. It is. This is not the main court. This is the east court here. So they don't have the foul numbers on the scoreboard. So that we're going to have a hard time keeping track for you that today. Tyshana Johnson missed the three. And possession will go to St. Paul Central as McDonald was chasing it. St. Paul Central, we mentioned, a young team. They have five freshmen, only two seniors. One of Willie Taylor's jokes is only two of the players on this, his roster have driver's licenses right now, just as an indication of how young this team is. But St. Paul Central fans should have nothing to worry about. This team will develop, and they have one of the best coaches in the state. As Javante Hill tries to make it work from the left side, but it doesn't fall. Scramble for the ball, and it's picked up by Central. Hill will try again. Layup no good. And Starr picks it up. Another foul on St. Paul Central. Foul is against, and I couldn't get a number there, but it is against St. Paul Central. We are still not in a penalty situation. But St. Paul Central has now put De La Salle in the bonus, so they are out of fouls to give. Not something you want to do with the team up by 15. Wollenick for three, short. Rebound Cyrus. And that nice sound of the backboard provided by Bertie Purek, our audio engineer. Five second violation on St. Paul Central. Wolinick, top of the key. Little to the right, rebound Hill. Foul on De La Salle. We've seen a lot of lazy fouls, especially coming from De La Salle early in this half. Most of those fouls coming from the backcourt. They're not shooting fouls, so it keeps Central from going to the free throw line. But I don't think Faith Johnson Patterson is happy with how her team is doing early. This is Cyrus out to McDonald. McDonald was looking for Rees, but she throws it away. And right now, I'd say St. Paul Central, the, the whole team might want to look at some Brett Favre tape. They are not hitting, hitting their passes in the opening minutes in this first half. Wolinick to Star. Out to number 20. That is Claire Thomas. Hill stops, pop, short. Rebound Wolinick. Long two, switch. Jamila Toussaint, the 5'7 senior forward, brings the lead up to 17. St. Paul Central in trouble. They fall, are, the full court press is getting to them. They got an open shot from Cyrus for three, but it's too strong. But Reeves is there to save it, not for long. It's picked up by Toussaint. Oh. 
Starr. Drives, that's gonna be short. And we've got a foul, Claire Thomas draws it. St. Paul Central in the penalty, so Claire Thomas will go to the free throw line. Saint or Thomas, a 5'9 freshman forward for the Islanders. Green's the first. We have substitutions for St. Paul Central. Reeves is going to step out, and Chapman will step back in. Second one bounces in for Thomas, and De La Salle up by 19. This is Reeves. Reeves can't get the shot to fall, but she races in there to pick up the rebound, and St. Paul Central will reset. This is Tadija Sanderson as she goes out to McDonald. Boyd out to Reeves. Chapman can't handle the pass. It will go back to De La Salle. St. Paul Central, as we mentioned, a quick turnaround. They played Orono last night, so they had to get ready for a game in less than 24 hours. And when you start the season like that, it can be pretty difficult to get some rhythm. They played two morning games last week. Three-pointer from Baker, no good. They played two games at 9 o'clock in the morning in the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tournaments, as that tournament expanded to a 12-team field this year, which forced two brackets into early morning and early afternoon action. Wolinick, pump face, goes inside to Baker. Baker, jump ball, possession arrow, well, points to De La Salle. No, they pointed to St. Paul Central. Oh, St. Paul Central forcing a turnover by virtue of the jump ball. And they're gonna get a substitution in there. Genvante Hill will step in, replacing Betsy McDonald. And she will inbound the ball. Boyd gets bailed out with a blocking foul. It will go against two Saints. Eight thirty-two to go in the first half. If you just joined us, it's been all De La Salle so far. Twenty-three to four is their lead. St. Paul Central now in the bonus. Sanderson. Goes to Hill. Hill getting the play from head coach Willie Taylor. Boyd, pump face. Central just can't seem to drive inside. Sanderson, no. And a foul on De La Salle as they Chapman fought for the rebound. That will put Central at the line. Here's the, they could perhaps put some points in the board. In almost 10 minutes of play, they've only put up four points. Chapman misses her first. Makes the second. But St. Paul Central has a lot of work to do as they trail by 18. Hill with the steal. Can't get the layup. Now Central trying some full court press. That leaves Baker open. Too strong. Possession will stay with the Islanders. Boyd in trouble. 
Gets it to Hill. De La Salle coming at them with a full court press. And Hill will go to the line as Diamond Lane will pick up the foul. Hill, not a great free throw shooter last season. As we mentioned, Hill, the cousin of Ohio State player Taylor Hill. Taylor won the Class 4A state title last year in Minneapolis South, currently the record holder for most career points all time at 38.94. Hill misses the first. It was a one-on-one -on -one situation, but Sanderson picks it up. Three, bullseye! And that might give St. Paul Central some life. It's 23 to eight, and the ball heads to the scores table. Better stay awake over there. 7.33 to go. Lane. Stops, pops, too strong. It's picked up by two Saints. But he throws it away. Johnson, the intended target, St. Paul Central will pick it up. Uh, you would think De La Salle's dominating as they go up by 15, but they've been giving Central a lot of opportunities. It's 23 to eight, we'll come back after a short break. This program is made possible in part by funding from Associated Bank with 17 locations in the Twin Cities area. Raymond Auto Body, providing collision repair services to the Twin Cities for four generations. Bob Peterson Agency of Country Financial in Shoreview, Minnesota. Warm's Tire Sales of Little Canada, family owned and operated for three generations. Karen's Monogramming and Sportswear, providing sports embroidery to Oakdale for over 10 years. Maplewood Dental Lab, providing dental services to the East Metro for over 25 years. Mancini's Charhouse and Lounge, a 50 year growing tradition in St. Paul. Raring Auto Body, now using environmentally friendly waterborne paint. RDA Collectibles in Oakdale, specializing in coin collectibles and sports memorabilia. Motorworks BMW and Mini in Bloomington, using recycled oil to heat our showroom floors. And by continuing contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Another thing is we're setting up for that post player. We got back to work. That is not happening. All right? Settle down, guys. Let's take it, man. Let's go. One, two, three. Islanders! Islanders! We rejoin you. 7.21 left to go in the first half. St. Paul Central will get the inbound after the South threw it away. De La Salle dominating, but Central just not getting a lot of shots to fall. Johnson with the steal, too strong. It's picked up by Toussaint. Wolinick mid-range, no. Johnson will get called or draw the foul. She threw it up there, fell down, and that sold the case to the referees. Starr's gonna come back in, but not before Johnson shoots free throws. Johnson averaged 6.3 points per game playing in 25 games last year for Minneapolis North. Cyrus coming back in, replacing Chapman. Johnson misses her free throw. Both teams struggling from the line. Reeves had the rebound, and there's that full court press again. And it works this time, Lane picks up the steal. But she can't get a handle on it, so there will be no fast break opportunity here. But Baker, quick shot is blocked by Cyrus, scramble for the ball, it's picked up by McDonald. No, it goes back to Lane, Lane, no! Oh my goodness! Reeves picks it up, a lot of close shots not going in. McDonald, long fadeaway, no, or a long hook. And it's picked up by two Saints. Sluggish start for both teams offensively. Baker, yes.
De La Salle, 25. St. Paul Central, 8. Foul, and we believe it will go against Lane. It is against Lane. Genvante Hill will go to the line. She missed her first free throw. Makes it this time. Drains both. And Lane goes back in after she has a word with Faith Johnson-Patterson. Star with the ball. Was looking for Johnson, but it's picked off by Sanderson. Sanderson gets to Boyd. Boyd for three. In and out. Rebound Star. Star to Lane. To Baker. Baker open. No! Picked up by Johnson, and Johnson cleans up the mess. McDonald carrying violation. St. Paul Central lost a close one to Orno last night if you just joined us. This is Baker. Baker has the ball stolen. Uh, stripped. No stop, no and stop, a foul. No stop. Hold, baseline. We go one Holding one call one against one Brianna one. Reeves as we pick up the audio from the officials. Cyrus now stepping out for St. Paul Central. Here we go, One and one player. One and one situation for the Islanders. Baker misses. Hill with the board. Boyd thought about it. Well, that's for three. No bounce. But Sanderson with the rebound and the putback. And Central should just get more of their shots to fall. They could find themselves in this game. Star fouled. She'll go to the line to shoot two. Foul for shoot three. She was behind the three-point line. You mentioned St. Paul Central. They just need to get more of their shots to fall. They could get in this. We had an upset last week, or I called an upset last week, when Rosemount took down Centennial. A line of star at the line. Gets the first one to bounce in. Rosemount beats Centennial 73-68 after taking down this St. Paul Central team at the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving Tournament. Star makes her second, and now we see a substitution. Cyrus going in for Reeves, and Johnson, or Griffiths, will step in momentarily to replace two Saints. One shot, clear. That wasn't the only upset of the weekend. Blaine took down Hopkins at that Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tournament, and Hopkins has started the season one and two after losing to Maple Grove earlier this week at this very facility. Hill draws the push foul after Starr makes two of three from the line. Double bonus, so we will have some free throws. Hill can't get the first one to fall. Hill 2 of 4 from the line so far. Gets the back end. St. Paul Central though, it's still down by 16. Star will get called for the charge. She'll get called for the charge. It doesn't happen too often as you're driving up mid-court, but it's still a team control foul, and that will give Central the ball back. Because it's a team control foul, they will not shoot free throws, even though they're in the bonus. Boyd 
to Hill. Hill going to McDonald. Central taking their time. There's no shot clock, so they can. Sanderson for three. No. Fight for the rebound, and it's picked up by Griffiths. Baker almost lost the ball. In fact, she does. Lane touched it. So give credit to Sanderson for going in there for the steal, even though she doesn't, won't get credited for it. She does force the turnover. We have less than five minutes to go. Hill to Boyd. That's to Sanderson. Shot about a three. Loses the ball. Kicks it back out. Hill, long three. Bullseye! Baskets starting to fall for St. Paul Central, but they're going to need to do that a little more often to get back in this one. Boyd, foul, and Willie Taylor's not happy with it. With 4.08 to go, that's going to put De La Salle back at the free throw line. And with 4.08 to go, we'd like to remind you that coming up at our halftime report presented by MotorWorks BMW Mini, we'll have our in-game box score for you. Again, coming up at the halftime report. We have a replay of the last three-pointer as we have the stoppage in place, so let's take a look at it. There it is. You don't really get to see the setup, but Hill had some space, and she took it home. So the foul was waved off, but De La Salle will pick it up. Baker, pump fakes. Looking for Johnson, but too many central players in the lane. We also like to remind you, if you want to order a DVD copy of this and any other game we televise this season, please go online to www.tyvp.net. Hill gets the steal from Baker. Another carrying violation. Again, it's www.tyvp.net to order your copy of high school girls basketball and high school boys basketball. We'll be bringing that to you later this season. In fact, our next uh, location will be a boys game as we head to Elk River to televise their game against Monticello top 10 team from outside the metro area. Baker going through the hole inside and she'll draw the foul. I believe the foul was called against Cyrus so that will send Baker to the line. Misses the first. Second. Hill. Had a little trouble inbound again. Here comes that full court press again. Hill. Didn't get much help. Cyrus out to Hill. Hill thought about a three. We'll go to the line. A lot of fouls in this game. That's instant Vontae Hill back in. She is three of five. Free throw shooting, not one of her strengths, at least not yet. That was number 21, Miranda Radecki with the shot for De La Salle. She can't get it to fall. And it's rebounded by Sanderson. As we mentioned, De La Salle not capitalizing on their short range looks at St. Paul Central. I think as Sanderson goes up in and out, that's been the theme. St. Paul Central just can't capitalize on those looks. Mid-range jumper good from Tyshiana Johnson. And De La Salle is up by a two to one advantage. 
McDonald for three. In and out. And it's picked up by Willenick. Throws it away, De La Salle does. St. Paul Central will get the turnover. Maya Wahlberg now back in the game for the Minutemen. Two and a half minutes to play. St. Paul Central with a lot of work to do. Boyd for three. In and out again. But Wahlberg is there for the rebound, and that's what St. Paul Central's got to do. Hill will try again. This time it falls from the top of the key. 13 points. If Central can cut this lead to 10, that will give them some momentum going into halftime. Wollenick misses. No put back, but Johnson or Griffiths will go to the line. Griffiths averaged 5.3 points per game, playing 23 games last season for the Lady Pullers before transferring to Minneapolis North. Griffiths, as she makes her first, her family moved, and that's another exemption in the transfer rule if your family moves to the home school's district. And as a senior, otherwise she would have been forced to use up her eligibility. Possession arrow points to De La Salle after a jump ball situation. Wolanick will step back in. Here's the re replay of the Hills three-pointer from the top of the key. There you see McDonald kicks it out to an open hill, and she had a lot of space. Wolanick. Finds Hill, or shot was long, and Hill picks it up. Two minutes remaining. McDonald, short. Rebound, Johnson. Baker. It almost gets pushed out of bounds, but finds Johnson, and Johnson with the mid-range jumper. That was Griffiths. Griffiths with the mid-range jumper. Wahlberg. Back to Hill. Hill thought about it this time, but Wolinick says no way. Wahlberg. Back out to Hill. Hill open again, not this time. Baker with the rebound. No, it's a fight for it, but Wolinick picks it up. De La Salle has numbers, not for long. McDonald with the pick. She's got an open. Boyd, Boyd, threw it up there, and she gets the foul. That was, my guess is she threw it up so she could draw the foul and try to get some points for the line. 108 remaining. We'd like to remind you again that coming up at our halftime report presented by Motorworks, BMW, and Mini. Our in-game box score. Boyd makes her first. Boyd, one of the freshmen we were talking about for St. Paul Central. So while this team may not be doing well right now, you could be seeing the future of the Minutemen on this roster. Of course, Willie Taylor has sent off many Division I players from his team over the years as Boyd makes both. They include actually Ellis Milan. Ebony, well, Angel Robinson, Georgie Jones, Kiara Buford, and Piera Taylor. Griffiths looking for an open Johnson. Johnson gets fouled. She will go to the line with 52.9 seconds remaining in the first half. A slow moving first half. as a result of uh, the multiple fouls we've had. That sends Johnson to the line. Misses her first. Keith Willie Taylor in St. Paul Central is to make remind his team that they are still in this game. A 14 point lead is not gonna be easy to overcome, but with 18 minute halves, it is doable. Johnson gets a second one to fall. In our game last week, or in the game I called last week, Centennial had a 13-point lead against Rosemount before Rosemount clawed their way back. Hill slowing things down. Without a shot clock, they can do that. It looks like they will be holding for the final shot.
There's no shot clock here. Look for Central to do something with about 10 seconds. Ten seconds now. Central will make, look to make a move. Not going to happen. Griffiths with the steal. Vila Sal has time to get one more shot off. Johnson under pressure. Gets it off. Too strong. And that's how the first half will come to an end. Still a dominating performance from the Islanders as they go into the locker room with a 36-21 lead over St. Paul Central. We'll take a break, and we'd like to remind you that coming up at halftime, our in-game box score. So we'll bring you that in a moment. This program is made possible in part by funding from Associated Bank with 17 locations in the Twin Cities area. Raymond Auto Body, providing collision repair services to the Twin Cities for four generations. The Bob Peterson Agency of Country Financial in Shoreview, Minnesota. Norm's Tire Sales of Little Canada, family owned and operated for three generations. Karen's Monogramming and Sportswear, providing sports embroidery to Oakdale for over 10 years. Maplewood Dental Lab, providing dental services to the East Metro for over 25 years. Mancini's Char House and Lounge, a 50-year growing tradition in St. Paul. Raring Auto Body, now using environmentally friendly waterborne paint. RDA Collectibles in Oakdale, specializing in coin collectibles and sports memorabilia. Motorworks BMW and Mini in Bloomington, using recycled oil to heat our showroom floors. And by continuing contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome back to the Lindbergh Center at Hopkins, where Thai Video Productions proudly presents high school girls basketball. This is our halftime report presented by Motorworks, BMW, and Mini in Bloomington. Let's take a look at our in-game box score. For St. Paul Central, Taylor, or Jen Vonte Hill <laughs> leads the way with nine points. However, she's just one of five from the free throw line. Sanderson is next with five. Chapman is next with three. Alexis Boyd is next with three, and then Betsy McDonald has two. In St. Paul Central, they don't have a lot of points in particular because they're not getting a lot of shots to fall, especially from short range. For De La Salle, a somewhat different story, but as they got off to that 13-0 run to start the first half, team captain Carissa Woolenick leads the way with 14 points. Serena Baker is next with 11. Alina Starr, one of the North transfers, has six. Derricka Griff Griffiths has seven, and Taishiana Johnson has five, so the Minneapolis North transfers accounting for 18 of De La Salle's 36 points, so a lot of talent coming over from the Lady Pullers over to the Islanders. As mentioned De La Salle starting that first half on a 13-0 run, using that to their advantage, and then using that full-court press, also getting some help from Central as they are cold from the floor. And so that will take care of our halftime report. And the second half will start shortly after this break. This portion of today's broadcast is paid for in part by Motorworks BMW and Mini in Bloomington. Serving the Twin Cities since 1989 and using recycled oil to heat our showroom floors. And we welcome you back to the Lindbergh Center at Hopkins for the first of two games today at the Breakdown Tip-Off Classic. We are covering the De La Salle St. Paul Central game for you today. The St. Paul Central Minutemen now taking the floor. We'd like to remind you that this broadcast is being brought to you in part by Quail Ridge Trading, located at France Avenue South in Bloomington. St. Paul Customs, located at Snelling Avenue North in St. Paul. Minnesota Literacy Council, located at Transfer Road in St. Paul. We'd like to thank Lone Spur Grill and Bar located at Cedar Lake Road in Minnetonka. They will also be providing the food for us during our intermission. Paisano's Pizza and Hot Hokies located at Selby and Dale in St. Paul. Wild Roast Cafe located at Hennepin Avenue East in Minneapolis. As we get a shot of the kid waving to the camera, we would like to say hello to you too. Action Auto Parts located at Arlington Avenue East in St. Paul. Jet Construction and Remodeling located at Selby Avenue in St. Paul. Cahoots Coffee Bar, located at Selby Avenue in St. Paul. Domino's Pizza, located at East 79th Street in Bloomington. Lindstrom Embroidery, located at 12th Avenue South in Bloomington. North State's Window and Door Solutions, located at 12th Avenue South in Bloomington. Go Vintage Classic Threads, located at Selby Avenue in St. Paul. 
Pizza Luce, located at Selby Avenue North in St. Paul. Margulis Landscape Contractors, located at West Larpenter Avenue in Roseville. Kennedy Law Group, located at East Lake Street in Minneapolis. Bouquets by Carolyn, located at Selby Avenue in St. Paul. And Union Bank and Trust, located at Central Avenue Southeast in Minneapolis. Khadija Sanderson will inbound the ball. St. Paul Central wearing red. De La Salle wearing white. Watch the side, watch the side. Johnson goes for the steal, and she runs over to the vinyl courts. There is no wall over there, so the ball could theoretically go all the way out to outside. I don't think it will go that far, though. Hill, pump fakes, goes for two off the board. Rebound, that is Toussaint, Toussaint no good. And Chapman is there for the rebound. This is Sanderson, Sanderson out to an open Chapman and Chapman gets the short range jumper. And St. Paul Central starting in the right direction. Still need to overcome a 13-point deficit, though. Harrell with the steal, and she's got an easy look from the right side. Two quick baskets for St. Paul Central, and now they get some life again. They cut the lead to 11. They have not cut it to 10 since De La Salle started this game with a 13-0 run. We're going to have a trip blocking foul on Chapman. Fouling an issue for both teams in the first half. Slowed this game down considerably. Star will inbound it. Finds an open Johnson and Johnson with the points from the paint. Central feeling things out. McDonald had an open three. Instead, tried to go inside to Reeves, and Beatles out there for the steal. Wolinek picks it up. Star kicks out to Wolinek for three. In and out. Rebound to Saint. Baker, pump fakes, drives to the right side, goes to Johnson. She tried to get a shot off, Toussaint does, but it's short. And it's picked up by Cyrus. Sanderson to Hill. Hill. Still feeling things out. St. Paul Central now taking more time. McDonald for three, hits the backboard, and it falls into Johnson's hands. Johnson to Baker. Baker, not open. She's going to try to drive and loses the ball again. St. Paul Central again getting stops on defense, but they need to turn those turnovers into points as Javante Hill does there, making it an 11-point game again. Talked about in the keys of the game that De La Salle needs to contain her. And so far, Hill has 13 points. He's getting close to her average. But De La Salle doing a good job containing the rest of the team as they're not getting shots to fall. Toussaint bailed out with a foul. It will go against McDonald. Diamond Lane and Erica Griffiths step back in to replace Baker and Toussaint. De La Salle coming out of that tri-metro conference. Uh, pri most schools are private religious facilities. Johnson misses, and it's picked up by Reeves. Of course, the cream of the crop in the tri-metro, and De La Salle and Minnehaha Academy, they've had some great games over the years. You'll see Minnehaha Academy in our second game in the tip-off classic. 
That's for three. That's Reeves. No good. And Johnson with the rebound. Johnson finds an open Wolinick. Wolinick makes it work from the left side. We mentioned Minnehaha Academy on our schedule for the second game of the tip-off classic. It's over at the main court as they take on Bloomington Kennedy. Hill, top of the key, bullseye. St. Paul Central now within 10. Lane, holy cow. Had she made that, that would have been it. I would have been out of here. Javante Hill to an open side Reeves and Reeves with the basket. St. Paul Central, uh, that, should, that should be an eight point lead, not a seven point lead. But they're closing in on De La Salle as we take a break. This program is made possible in part by funding from Associated Bank with 17 locations in the Twin Cities area. Raymond Auto Body, providing collision repair services to the Twin Cities for four generations. The Bob Peterson Agency of Country Financial in Shoreview, Minnesota. Norm's Tire Sales of Little Canada, family owned and operated for three generations. Karen's Monogramming and Sportswear, providing sports embroidery to Oakdale for over 10 years. Maplewood Dental Lab, providing dental services to the East Metro for over 25 years. Mancini's Char House and Lounge, a 50 year growing tradition in St. Paul. Raring Auto Body, now using environmentally friendly waterborne paint. RDA Collectibles in Oakdale, specializing in coin collectibles and sports memorabilia. Motorworks BMW and Mini in Bloomington, using recycled oil to heat our showroom floors. And by continuing contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. We rejoin you, 13.49 to go in the second half. St. Paul Central has cut a 15 point lead to eight. We mentioned De La Salle getting, Central getting stops on defense. Now they're finally starting to convert them into points. But McDonald drives in there, didn't keep her eyes on the ball, and she loses it to Wolinick. Wolinick to Johnson. Stars open, not for long. Tries to make something happen. Kicks out to Johnson for three. No. Rebound, Johnson picks up her own board. But not for long. It's stolen by Hill. Hill going to drive on the left side. Tough shot, and it falls. It's a six-point game. Hill went up against somebody bigger than she was and somehow makes it work. Javante Hill is going to bring something special to the Minutemen. Not this year, then definitely for later seasons. You've seen some sparks of what she can do already. She has 15 points. Baker to Griffiths. Griffiths can't get the jumper. And the rebound will go to Central. There will be no rebound as it went out of bounds. As now more players are going through. Let's check that replay of the last bucket by Hill as Central inbounds the ball. Here you see Hill drives to the left side. She found some space, and it was Wolinick, it appeared, was defending her, but Hill makes it work as she gets a kiss off the glass, and she does the same again. It's a four-point game. Stolen by Sanderson. Sanderson, she didn't make it two points. No, fight for the rebound. It goes to De La Salle. Star picks it up. And we have a foul on St. Paul Central. That's against Destiny Roberts. Starting to see some excitement with this game now. As we mentioned, De La Salle, this is their first time under Faith Johnson Patterson's system. They have not played a game. Central has three under their belt. Baker, top of the key, bullseye. De La Salle finally gets some space. But look out, St. Paul Central may not have the talent as they had in years past, but they have one of the top coaches in the state. And he knows how to win games. So does Faith Johnson Patterson. Two living legends on the coach's side today. Dara Roberts for three, gets her own rebound. Can't get the got the fall, and we have an over-the-back call 
against Baker. Here's a replay of Baker's three-pointer. There it is. Usage, yes, adds some space, and De La Salle not afraid to take it. De La Salle playing a little more of an up-tempo game than they did. Well, Brian Fry also played one, too. Hill thought about a three, and will go to the line. Good patience for Hill. She'll try to get some points from the line. Hill with 15 points. We mentioned she was two of five from the free throw line in the first half. She'll be looking to correct that, I imagine. Too high. Gets the second one to fall. It's a two possession game, but there's an eternity to play with 11 and a half minutes. Foul on St. Paul. No, traveling violation. Roberts fell. I thought she was going to get called for the blocking foul, but Baker gets called from taking too many steps. St. Paul Central still very much in this game. As you see, the De La Salle bench getting a little nervous. Reeves. Hill for three. No, that would have been huge. Baker in trouble again. Central, they like to run that full court press as we mentioned to you earlier. Now Starr in trouble. She gets double teamed. Fine, look for Johnson open, but it hits the brim. So that full court press working. McDonald nearly loses the ball, and it's picked up by Reeves. Whose shot is short? Rebound Griffiths. Stops, pops, too strong. Rebound Roberts. Roberts, avoid to Hill. Hill resetting. Slowing things down a little bit. Hill gets the right-handed layup. Again, she had Wolinick guarding her. Hill not afraid to take it even if somebody's in her face. And so Central brings the lead back to four. Foul it will go against Reeves. It's a shooting foul, and that will send a line of star to the line. You mentioned Star had six points in the first half. So after a slow moving first half, this second half going at lightning speed. Star misses her first. That's been another issue for both teams. Neither of them doing well from the free throw line. Central fighting fatigue. De La Salle fighting butterflies. Alina Starr open from the paint. No good. Rebound Griffiths. She can't clean it up. And it's rebounded by Hill. Central can tie or take the lead with this possession. Sanderson out to McDonald. Central taking their time. And that's helped them a lot. Hill, NBA three. Oh, that would have been big. Baker open on the other end. Sanderson was there to break it up, but Baker gets her own rebound. She still can't get it to fall. Baker, traveling violation. You can jump once, but you can't jump twice. So give credit for St. Paul Central as they hurry in there to stop the fast break opportunity for De La Salle. And St. Paul Central still not giving up as you get to see a fight between two legends 
in Minnesota girls basketball coaching. Both having successful careers. Stolen by Willinen. She's open on the left side. And she'll take care of that layup. Timeout. St. Paul Central 45-41 with 8.38 to go in the second half. De La Salle getting that last basket, but St. Paul Central still not out of this. We rejoin you, 8.38 to go in the second half. St. Paul Central started this half down by 15. They've come as close as two. Right now they trail by four. De La Salle ranked second in Minnesota Sports Online polls. Diamond Lane with the steal. Foul on Sanderson. Sanderson did what she had to do to stop that easy bucket from going in, but we'll see if Lane can convert from the free throw line. Lane, a junior, we mentioned 5.4 points per game last season for the Islanders under former head coach Brian Fry. Yeah. Makes the first as you hear that swish up the net. One. Can't get the second one. Fight for the rebound. Jump ball. Possession arrow points to De La Salle. De La Salle, 46. St. Paul Central, 41. 8 2 0 on the clock in the first or in second half. Baker pump fakes again. Drives to the right side. Loses the ball to Hill. St. Paul Central's picked up on that play. But they have to be careful though, De La Salle looking for that pass to get picked off. Sanderson, holy cow! Running towards the right hand basket from the right side, she gets it to fall, it's a one possession game again. This is Johnson, Johnson, no good. Rebound Baker, Baker cleans up the mess. She finally gets one to fall. 7.34 left, but still a lot of time. I'm getting surrounded over here by a lot of players, fans looking at this game. Sanderson, out to Chapman, Chapman's going to the line. Foul is on Griffiths. Chapman will get two free throws. <laughs> Chapman misses her first. That's what St. Paul Central cannot afford to do. I don't know if we can get a shot over here, but I'm getting a crowd over by the announcer's table. Chapman makes one of two, so it's a four-point game. Johnson, Johnson from the left side, gets the left-handed layup. Sanderson for three, shorts. Rebound, Chapman, no put back. Reeves picks it up, and she'll go to the line. 
I mentioned in the first half, St. Paul Central had some difficulties getting offensive rebounds and getting second chance opportunities to go in their favor. But we have Cyrus at the line, and she will shoot two. Gets the first. Star will now go in. Not yet. Okay, now she will. She runs back. She went back and forth there a little bit as she replaces Rolinick. The old producer would say it was going back and forth. Cyrus misses the second, and it's picked up by Baker. Loses the ball to Chapman. Chapman looking for Sanderson. Can't find her. Gila Sal ball. Johnson for three. Ball's eye and the foul. That could be the play of the game. The St. Paul Central can't hit, hang on with the Islanders. Substitution, Reeves steps in for Chapman. A big three-pointer from the Minneapolis North transfer, Tyshana Johnson. You mentioned earlier, Johnson played at Minneapolis North as an eighth grader. You can do that at the Minnesota State High School League and then play at another school without using up a year of eligibility. So Johnson will be at the line for a four-point play. She's a 5'11 freshman center. One shot, players, one time. Johnson completes the four-point play. De La Salle goes back up by nine. McDonough loses the ball. Double team works to perfection as Johnson now has it. Johnson now loses it. And we have a stoppage in play. It's a foul. And it will go against De La Salle. So they cancel each other out. The turnovers do anyway. Here we'll inbound it. You can see the portable bleachers that they brought in today for the East Court. They have some permanent ones over at the main court. Johnson, oh, that's Hill. Hill stops, pops short. Vila Salvo. Griffiths, now she'll drive from the right side and gets the switch. Timeout, St. Paul Central, 56-45, 5.51 left to go in the second half. This program is made possible in part by funding from Associated Bank with 17 locations in the Twin Cities area. Raymond Auto Body, providing collision repair services to the Twin Cities for four generations. The Bob Peterson Agency of Country Financial in Shoreview, Minnesota. Warms Tire Sales of Little Canada, family owned and operated for three generations. Karen's Monogramming and Sportswear, providing sports embroidery to Oakdale for over 10 years. Maplewood Dental Lab, providing dental services to the East Metro for over 25 years. Mancini's Char House and Lounge, a 50 year growing tradition in St. Paul. Raring Auto Body, now using environmentally friendly waterborne paint. RDA Collectibles in Oakdale, specializing in coin collectibles and sports memorabilia. Motorworks BMW and Mini in Bloomington, using recycled oil to heat our showroom floors. And by continuing contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. We rejoin you in the second half. St. Paul Central inbounding the ball, and Devontae Hill draws the foul. Play getting a little sloppy again for the Islanders. D. 
De La Salle is in the bonus, and that's key for the Islanders as they hold an 11-point lead. See Hill's left hand taped up there on the screen. Violation, backcourt violation on St. Paul Central, or carrying violation. In any case, it's a turnover, and De La Salle picks it up. They may be able to ice this before too long. Not that way. De La Salle throws it away. We mentioned De La Salle continuing to keep St. Paul Central knocking on the door. Reeves inside, too strong, De La Salle ball. Star, back to Star, the Star with the right-handed layup. She had Johnson. And it was a give and go play that works to perfection for the Islanders. Hill stops, pops short. That's Roberts with the rebound and the three. Minutemen running out of time. This is Diamond Lane with the ball. To Johnson. Johnson trips. Traveling violation. Tough break for the Islanders. Substitution coming in for Central. That's Boyd replacing Roberts. I'd like to remind you that coming up, we'll have our post-game report presented by MotorWorks BMW Mini in Bloomington with uh, interviews with our players of the game and head coaches. That's coming up at the post-game report presented by B MotorWorks BMW and Mini. again we have a foul and that will send Hill to the free throw line two shots two they run eight you ready eight Hill struggling so far today from the charity stripe drains the first Paul Central will have to hurry. There is no shot clock here, so De La Salle might play some kill the clock ball here. Hill makes both, eight point game. De La Salle still holding a pretty solid cushion there. Johnson! Did she lose the ball? Nope. That would have been a huge mistake as she runs out to go to lane. You can do that on an inbounds. Baker. Star. Star finds it open. Johnson. Johnson can't make it work. She had an open look for about two feet. Timeout. St. Paul Central. 3.52 to go in the game. We rejoin you, 3.52 left to go in the second half. St. Paul Central down by eight, currently driving. Boy, boy, 
can't make it work. Good positioning by Griffiths. Lane open on the other end. She can't get a handle on it, but does find Baker. Another traveling violation. And De La Salle continuing to keep the door open for the Minutemen. Alan Dabney stepping out. Gill will inbound. Reeves in trouble. Look for Hill, but it's picked off. That was Griffiths with the steal. Here's Star. Gill is out, can melt some clock here. They're not going to do that, though. They go to Johnson, but she can't get either basket to fall. She'll get a third try, and she'll have to do it from the free throw line. Johnson will get two shots here and a chance to ice the game for the Islanders. Misses her first. Freshman Johnson is. Plenty of time to develop she will have. Misses both free throws though. Baker with the rebound, not for long. Jump ball, possession arrow, points to St. Paul Central. Diamond Lane with a foul, Central in the bonus. Another lazy foul from De La Salle. If there's one blip about th this game, it would be those lazy fouls for the Islanders. And Diamond Lane now going out. I don't know if she fouled out or if they're just substituting her for Wolinick. We would like to remind you, though, as Javante Hill takes her free throws, that coming up, we will be coming back to you from the Lindbergh Center for Bloomington Kennedy and versus Minnehaha Academy. That's coming up after the conclusion of this game. Gill makes her first. Makes another one, it becomes a two possession game and that is critical with 2.53 to go in the game. Gill does make her second, so Hill's starting to pick it up from the free throw line. It's a two possession game. Hill with the steal. Central will be looking to make it a one possession game. Hill goes out to Bo to Island Dabney, but she can't get the mid-range jumper. Johnson has the ball, goes out to Baker. De La Salle could continue, can milk clock. I mentioned last week, it's not how much of a lead you have, it's how you can use the clock when you have it. Baker, is this the dagger? No. Johnson with the rebound and she finally cleans up the mess. It's an eight point game again. Hill has to make something happen. No good, trying to get her own rebound. She does, tough shot, picks it up again. Finds an open Sanderson for three, no. Rebound Johnson. The Central might have to start playing foul and chase here to stay alive. Star kicks out to Baker from the corner. No. Fight for the rebound. Ball will stay with the Islanders with less than 90 seconds to go. That could do it.
One twenty-nine to go. Baker gonna milk some clock. Hands off to Wolinick. Out to Baker. Baker pump fakes. Griffiths, that was a tough shot, no good. And Johnson draws the foul, 108 to go. That should put the outcome of this game into De La Salle's hands. One more time, we'd like to remind you, if you want to order a copy of this and any other game we televise this season for Thai Video Productions, you can go online to www.tybp.net. That's www.tybp.net. Order your copy of High School Girls Basketball. DVD copies are $15. I'd like to remind you that $3 of every purchase will go to the host school. In this case, Hopkins. Johnson, one of two. But Central down by nine might be a little too much for them with the running clock and no shot clock to help them. Devontae Hill open on the left side. De La Salle will give her that. Willie Taylor calls timeout with 56.9 seconds to go. It's a seven point game. Central hanging on, but not by much. Our 3-2 right here, we're matching up in here, okay? But you get careful because sometimes you're on the side of the kid. Just keep her in front, in front. Yes, you, you forwards down here, you guys can come out. You guys, what you're doing is you're coming like right by here, that's it. And then right here, come out, and it's like you're matching. I feel like I'm pressing the last bit of it. We gotta take care of the basketball. Stop forcing things. We want to take time. We need to running five ball right away. Go through cut, fake in, you got a three-pointer, take it. Everybody got that? One more time out. Rebound. One, two, three. One, two, three, Central. Okay, guys, listen up. Who's ever in the top of this? If Jim passes the ball, they're going back. 56.9 seconds to go. We'd like to remind you one more time that this broadcast is being brought to you in part by Quail Ridge Trading, located in France Avenue South in Bloomington. Gilasau will inbound the ball. Central look for a stop. If they can't get it, they may have to foul, but De La Salle already in the bonus. De La Salle gets the bailout timeout call with 48.6 seconds left. This program is made possible in part by funding from Associated Bank with 17 locations in the Twin Cities area. Raymond Auto Body, providing collision repair services to the Twin Cities for four generations. The Bob Peterson Agency of Country Financial in Shoreview, Minnesota. Warm's Tire Sales of Little Canada, family owned and operated for three generations. Karen's Monogramming and Sportswear, providing sports embroidery to Oakdale for over 10 years. Maplewood Dental Lab, providing dental services to the East Metro for over 25 years. Mancini's Char House and Lounge, a 50 year growing tradition in St. Paul. Raring Auto Body, now using environmentally friendly waterborne paint. RDA Collectibles in Oakdale, specializing in coin collectibles and sports memorabilia. Motorworks BMW and Mini in Bloomington, using recycled oil to heat our showroom floors. And by continuing contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. 48.6 seconds left. We've had nothing but close games here so far in early action in the Breakdown Tip-Off Classic. De La Salle still has possession. St. Paul Central now forced to play foul and chase. Okay, 
Alina Starr at the line. And she makes her first. Both teams in the bonus, but De La Salle turned the key moment of this game, unless something crazy happens here as Starr gets both free throws, would be that 13-0 run De La Salle used to jump out early. San Trojo cut it to two earlier in this half, but when you're playing catch up as Sanderson can't get the three, when you're playing catch up, it's just hard to come back from that deep of a deficit. They were down by as much as 16. Another foul. This time it will go against Sanderson, but the outcome of this game is no longer in doubt. De La Salle will win their first game of the season, and St. Paul Central will fall to 1-3 and three as you get a look at our scoreboard over there. Two shots. Relax, players. Two shots. Baker gets her free throws. We'd like to remind you, our post-game report is coming up, presented by MotorWorks, BMW, and Mini. We're going to talk to our players of the game and head coaches from both teams. Sinks both. Good effort for St. Paul Central, though, and as Sanderson goes for three, can't get it to fall. It's picked up by Johnson. And another foul. This time on... Well, it looks like it's on St. Paul Central again as they're motioning. Saying this is a solid effort from St. Paul Central and every indication suggests that they will be the favorite to win the St. Paul City Conference again. Not a lot of competition right now. Highland Park struggling early. Humboldt did get pick up a victory against Washburn earlier this week. Arlington no longer in the conference. They don't have enough players as they go through some restructuring. Johnson misses her first, but that's a moot point by now. And Como Park and Harding still in rebuilding mode. I don't see much competition heading St. Paul Central's way. I did talk with Willie Taylor, though. He thinks they could lose a game this year in the conference. Johnson was one of two. If you're back. Five seconds. Felix out can just hang on to the ball. And they do. The final score. De La Salle, 66, St. Paul Central, 54. St. Paul Central made it interesting for a while, but De La Salle was just too much. We will come back shortly with our players of the game for both teams. This program is made possible in part by funding from Associated Bank with 17 locations in the Twin Cities area. Raymond Auto Body, providing collision repair services to the Twin Cities for four generations. The Bob Peterson Agency of Country Financial in Shoreview, Minnesota. Warms Tire Sales of Little Canada, family owned and operated for three generations. Karen's Monogramming and Sportswear, providing sports embroidery to Oakdale for over 10 years. Maplewood Dental Lab, providing dental services to the East Metro for over 25 years. Mancini's Char House and Lounge, a 50-year growing tradition in St. Paul. Raring Auto Body, now using environmentally friendly waterborne paint. RDA Collectibles in Oakdale, specializing in coin collectibles and sports memorabilia. Motorworks BMW and Mini in Bloomington, using recycled oil to heat our showroom floors. And by continuing contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. And welcome to the post-game report presented by MotorWorks BMW and Mini. I'm here with the winning team, captain of the De La Salle Island Islanders, Carissa Wolinick, and head coach, Faith Johnson-Patterson. Well, we'll start with you, Faith. Well, new team, and you have a perfect record so far. How does that feel right now? Well, it feels good anytime you win a you know, game. And uh, obviously, St. Paul Central, well coached, very good team. That was a, I thought that was a good victory for us for our first game. Well, it was certainly a, a, an an exciting game for you. I see you're losing your voice a little bit there. So <laughs> Central, you had the, a 15-point lead going into halftime. Central cut it to two. What did you tell your players after that? Well, for the most part, every you know, the basketball is a game of runs. And, you know, the, you know bottom line, I just told them we got to take care of the basketball, you know, make good choices, and time is on our side. And we just got to, you know, really just go out there and execute our game plan, you know, continue to play defense, work hard, and just, you know, slow it down a little bit and take our time. 
Carissa, you had a big first half and then helped the De La Salle hang in there for the win. So how is the team adjusting under the new head coach and the new system for the Islanders? I feel like we're adjusting well. I really like coach, and I think that we're – it was our first game. We haven't really played together that much, so we're still, like, getting used to each other, but I think that we're getting better at it, and I really like my new teammates. What would you say you are right now in terms of progress with adjustments because this was your first game today in action? I think we're doing well. I think we're getting used to each other. <laughs> yeah. And how will this game set you up for the rest of the season? It's our first game, so we're just getting – yeah. Just kicking things off. Well, yeah. certainly starting in the right direction. Again, De La Salle, 1-0. So Faith Johnson-Patterson, perfect so far as these coaches at De La Salle. Well, thank you for taking the time to speak with us, and good luck to you, and we might see you again later this season. All right, thank you. Uh, St. Paul Central coming up. Mike Beaton here with St. Paul Central, Jen Vonte Hill, and head coach Willie Taylor. We'll start with you, Coach Willie. Uh, down by 15 in the first half, came back by two. What does this say about your team as they finish up their second back-to-back -back this season? I think we're still learning and we're getting better every second that we're on the floor. And what was it like to play against Faith Johnson-Patterson and De La Salle's first game of the season uh, since you two go back quite a ways? I always look forward to it. We have a lot of fun each time. And how will this help you set up? At, I've heard you have another back-to-back -back before you go into conference play. So where, where do you see yourself right now? I think that um, we've had a tough schedule so far. Our, our schedule is going to continue to be tough, and um, it's just going to help us keep improving. I'm, I'm looking toward the state tournament. That's my goal and our team's goal, and we just need to keep getting better. Now, Jen Vante, you had a pretty big game today throughout, so what did you do? You had to go up against Wollenick a couple times and got a couple baskets to fall, so how did you get that to work? Um, my main momentum was to push the basket. And where do you, how do you see yourself right now as a sophomore versus last year as a freshman as uh, you guide a very young central team? Uh, our team is very young, looking for more stuff in the future. And um, our team will be aggressive, and we just go out there and scrap. So I think that's the most difference between our other teams. What areas do you feel you've improved on since your first two games of the season, which was also a back-to-back? -back? Um, uh, let's see. A drive to the basket, putting the ball in the hoop, and my three-pointers. Nice. Well, thank you for taking time to speak with us. Good luck, and hopefully we'll see you uh, later on this season at the Twin Cities game and maybe state tournament, too. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, that was head coach Willie Taylor and Jen Vonta Hill of St. Paul Central. We'd like to remind you one more time, you want to order a copy of this game, go to www.tyvp.net. For everyone here at Thai Video Productions, this is Mike Beaton saying so long, everybody. Today's broadcast is paid for in part by MotorWorks BMW and Mini in Bloomington. Serving the Twin Cities since 1989 and using recycled oil to heat our showroom floors.